Welcome to our technical demonstration. We are going to show you what we call tooling of tomorrow. And the fun thing is it's here today. The tooling of tomorrow is really large scale 3D printed tooling. Hi, my name is Gregory Hay and I'm the Director of Added Manufacturing for AirTech International. Today we welcome you to our facility in Springfield, Tennessee, which is the home of our large scale additive manufacturing uh, facilities and uh, team. So today we'll give you a uh, look at what we do and how we do it, including a little bit of an introduction to our full product line and our services. Uh, along the way, you'll meet uh, a lot of our team members, which make up about 30 years of experience in large scale additive, comp uh, additive manufacturing. And uh, we hope you enjoy uh, learning about the process from A to Z today. Okay, so here we are in our manufacturing floor with our Thermwood LSAM. This particular machine has a 10 foot by 40 foot build volume. And so what that means is we can print a part that's uh, up to 40 feet long and 10 feet wide, as well as five feet tall. So on the specs of the machine, uh, we'll give you a little bit more information about how it works and what its capabilities are. Uh, this particular machine is set up to have a 200 pound per hour throughput on the extruder, on the printing side, on this gantry uh, right above my head. And so we can set up this machine to print in two ways. So the traditional way that most uh, FDM printers are done, which is referred to as HLP, uh, where layers are stacked vertically one at a time to create the shape. Uh, unique to this machine, we also have the VLP option, which means we can actually print sideways. So imagine the part growing towards you as it's being built. And so this allows us to, to uh, best uh, orientate your part uh, to optimize either the build time, uh, the weight, or even the uh, face sheet thickness, so to make sure we get you the best tool with the best performance in the least amount of time. So this machine does do both the additive and subtractive processes. So the additive gantry being the one that's nearest to us, with the uh, five axis milling gantry being on the far side of the machine. So we'll go down to that end of the machine in a, in a little bit uh, once we meet with uh, our machinist to talk about capabilities and how we operate. Um, on the machine here itself, we do already have the uh, bed set up to print our part we're going to be demonstrating today. So there's a piece of what's called beadboard down there. And this is what the substrate we print on top of uh, when, when we make a part for any application. So AirTech is working on, on ways to uh, better improve this area. And we have a lot of things coming in this, uh, ne this next year to show you on how to make this uh, faster and a little bit more sustainable. So the biggest challenge to large scale manufacturing, especially for tooling, is having the right resins. Uh, that can do the job that they're intended to. So uh, one of the things I'll show you next is uh, our resin offerings. So not only producing full finished tooling for our customers, uh, we're also dedicated to making sure that you, the customer, have access to the same resins to produce tooling uh, the same way we do, with the same results. And uh, most of these materials are now, uh, have gone through multiple uh, heat cycles. So we, we're already eclipsing 250 uh, cycles in an autoclave with our 350 material. Uh, but we have many other offerings for all different applications. So let's get to go take a look at the resin right now and uh, we'll, we'll tell you a little bit about each one and their applications. So we're gonna start on this end. This is our, uh, our ABS material. It's called the S150CF. So we use this in low temperature applications. So things like uh, trim fixtures and jigs, assembly and bonding fixtures, uh, low temperature curing and even master models. One step down from there is our, uh, our modified polycarbonate. So this is the uh, uh, C250 CF material. And so it shares a lot of the same application range as the 150, but offers a much more durable uh, surface with better uh, uh, resistance to, to chemicals, as well as uh, better mechanicals in the part itself. Additionally, we can use this for uh, uh, low temperature out of autoclave cures. So we are seeing a lot of use for this in, uh, in auto autoclave uh, composite manufacturing uh, for, for, for tooling. On the high end, we have our, uh, our I350 CF material. So this is a uh, PEI or Altem uh, modified with carbon fiber reinforcement. So we're seeing this being used in uh, high temperature bonding fixtures, uh, pre-preg tooling uh, for in autoclave, auto autoclave. And so this has been the, the, the star of the show for us in a lot of ways uh, and we have tons of data. So for those who are interested in really durable tooling, especially for high temperature applications, this is it. 
and it offers great performance uh, for, for tooling applications in Autoclave with vacuum integrity and great surface finish uh, uh, for your parts. But we are thinking about this holistically. So we are also looking at uh, uh, purge materials. So you need to clean the extruder between these different materials or at the end of the day. We also have a, uh, a purge material that we've developed in AirTech. And this is actually from our legacy line of materials that we used internally for many years to clean our extruders for our film manufacturer, where you can't have any sort of carbon buildup or contaminants in the extruder. Now we have that same technology and same uh, uh, quality assurance in our large scale additive manufacturing. So now we're gonna look at let's put it, putting these resins to work and that starts with getting a service from our customer and start looking at the tooling design. So how do we now take these resins and put them to work on the large scale uh, additive manufacturing equipment? So we're gonna take you over by the machine, introduce you to Robert Bedsell and uh, he'll give you a little bit more insight on the design processes as well as uh, how we print and how we design tooling for all different applications. Hi, I'm Robert Betzel. I'm the Additive Engineering Specialist here at AirTech. Today we're going to be printing a trim fixture for a fan cowl tool. Um, I already have the uh, geometry here from the uh, design team and it's been moved in, into position. Uh, from here it's a relatively simple process of uh, dividing the part into uh, outer surfaces shown here and then also uh, we have a header support structure. Okay, so the first step is we're going to load some material. Uh, today's part is a low temperature tool, um, trim fixture. So we're just going to use Daltram 150 ABS. Notice our, our LSAM, it's a little loud over here. Our LSAM has uh, two hoppers. We're going to be printing from hopper one today. And we also have um, the smaller hopper for experimental uh, tests with ongoing materials development that we're working on here at AirTech. So we have our material ready to go. We'll add our one to the material. So a wise quality step to do before every print is to ensure that our material is good and dry with our moisture analyzer. Okay, so 10 minutes have gone by. The material is uh, reasonably cool. We're gonna start this test uh, for Daltram 150. Already pre-selected, pretty simple process. It says add sample to pan. Now we're at our ideal weight. Okay, so it took about five minutes to get our answer. 0.026% for our moisture content. Daltram uh, 150, that's, that's typical. That's, that means we're sufficiently dry, we're good to print. We're gonna walk over here. We're gonna turn the heaters on. The zones will be hottest. And one good high speed push here. Wipe the nozzle tip off, and then we'll drive over to start printing. There's some kind of deep features machined onto the, onto the print surface. We went ahead and programmed a second bead along the tool surface. And then we have this header toolpath uh, programmed support structure. It's usually a good idea to double check the bead width. The 
this yellow bar right next to me is a safety stop, so I'm still protected even though I'm in here. If it bumps me, the machine will go on the e-stop. The other thing we need to do pretty early in the front is start our thermal cameras so we can record each layer uh, for quality assurance. Thermal camera gives us high confidence that we'll have good adhesion layer to layer at the, the program layer times for this particular front. All right, so now that you've seen a little bit about what happens on the additive side of the machine uh, and, the, and the materials going to work, we're going to start taking you over to the uh, subtractive side of the machine. We'll, we'll introduce you to Joe Harger, who's our uh, lead subtractive engineer uh, on, the, on the LSAM. So he'll start you uh, looking at uh, what we, get, what we started with over here, the, the, the services from the customer, and then also uh, what geometry has been now created by uh, starting with a near net uh, 3D printed shape that, that Joe will, will eventually get over here to work with to bring it to uh, its full uh, dimensions, tolerances, and service finishes uh, using subtractive processes. So with that, I'm gonna hand you off to Joe on this side, and he'll walk you through the processes. Hi. I'm Joe Harger, Senior NC Programmer here at AirTech. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate here is uh, taking a design from Robert um, down the print side and process it through Mastercam, creating the tool paths and showing you machining afterwards. So Mastercam is used from the print side to uh, the trim side um, from start to stop. So this is, this is going to uh, simulate right before I get ready to machine right now. We're going to machine these grooves in here and also um, the tooling ball hose along with the outside groove. Okay, the surface is done, the tool pass is done, so let's go ahead and take a look at it and see how it looks. Surface looks really good. Uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, we did a uh, about 20,000 step over. Um, it looks really good. A lot of time has been invested into finding tooling that is uh, going to last on this material, 20% carbon fill, 30% carbon fill, whatever it may be. Um, and, uh, you know, we've tried uh, uh, solid carbide, PVD bits, uh, uh, even PCD, you know, you're, you're getting into expensive bits at that, at that uh, point with the PCD, and they're not even giving us the tool life that we are looking for. We finally found th this tooling here, and uh, it's given us really, really long tool life, um, and we're happy with the results so far. And here in the near future, we're hoping to add it to our catalog to offer to our customers. All right, thanks, Joe. All right, so going back to surfacing, uh, now I just saw the finished tool and the tools we're using to cut, the, cut these uh, molds and other uh, trim fixtures in this case. I'll show you kind of what the stages look like as we go from the uh, as printed, so just the printed shape, uh, to some basic uh, rough cuts to a fully finished tool surface, what those things might, might look like. So over here on the table, we have three specimens. This first one here is basically a representation of a, a as printed shape, right? So this is just about what it comes off the machine looking like uh, as it's been printed. So you can see the bead cusps in here. It's a fairly rough surface, but you can see it's very dense.
So it's just a, a typical placard or sample. So just representation. Uh, if we're doing some rough cuts on the CNC, you know, you may still have a pretty coarse surface, but you've got you know, a nice flat surface here, right? So not much going on, but you've, you've at least knocked down these cups, cups with beads over here to get you probably 90% of the way and get, get closer to your near net shape that you're going to be uh, doing some finish machining to other uh, details like their uh, uh, scribes or channels uh, uh, or plumbing like Joe was doing on the uh, trim fixture. But it comes down to the end here when you want a real smooth surface like something you may use on a, uh, a cure tool. We're going to take this and we're going to bench this to tolerance but also to service finish uh, based off whatever the customer needs. So in this case we assumed a, uh, a layup tool for curing of a composite part so we went real, uh, real fine in the finish. So let's take a quick reading. All right, results are in. So on this particular panel, we're sitting at uh, 16.9. So that's, pr that's fairly fine. So this may be something that you consider close to an A-class finish or even like an automotive type tool uh, for, for this uh, level of finish and, and, and surface, uh, uh, surface roughness level. Uh, most aerospace tools we're talking about probably being in the range of 32 on average. So these are some basic steps in, in the finishing process. Uh, over here on this end of the floor, we may do things like uh, you know, potting bushings, uh, putting plumbing in, uh, casters, uh, drilling extra holes, uh, deburring the tool. All those things will kind of happen on this end of the floor before we start, get, start getting into any of our more in-depth uh, quality processes. I'm gonna bring Robert back in again, and he's gonna do a uh, laser scanning. Of, this is actually the cure tool for the same uh, trim fixture we, we printed earlier and that Joe was machining. So this one's already been fully finished. We got, we've pulled high temperature laminates off this uh, previously, but we're gonna use this as the example. You can go ahead and see the surface finish on there. It's pr pretty, pretty smooth and shiny. And that's just with a tool sealer on it. No other post, finish, uh, post finishing or, or sealers or, or coatings. Uh, this is just as you would lay up a laminate on top of the tool. So even here we're seeing uh, great uh, vacuum integrity, uh, even at high temperature, uh, up to 350 degrees or higher. So I'm going to pass it over to Robert, and uh, he'll show you kind of the data points we're capturing, and then maybe even do an overlay uh, if we have time, and uh, take it from there. This is our Creaform laser scanner. Uh, it's 15 lasers. You can see the points showing up on the screen there. From here, Robert's going to take this data, go into the inspector program, overlay it with the uh, as-designed geometries, and look for any deviations. And of course, we want to make sure that uh, we uh, can stay within spec for what the customer needs, uh, and make sure that uh, it's fully uh, recorded and uh, presented to our customer in our quality reporting. So every tool that leaves here uh, has all documentation, uh, all of our uh, uh, steps for checking you know, specifications, features, service roughness, and then of course, dimensional accuracy uh, uh, across the entire tool itself. So all these things come to our customers as a fully uh, developed package uh, for their uh, uh, record keeping and for their analysis before we we're allowed to ship the tool. So uh, once we get through all these steps, essentially goes over to the customer, uh, hopefully you, and you guys can go through a sign off on it and it's off to your door. And something like this tool here, uh, the, uh, the trim fixture we, we printed today, uh, from time of uh, of order receipt or the geometry that gets to our front door to a finished tool to your door. Generally we're talking about three to four weeks, uh, sometimes faster, really depends. But uh, uh, that's a good rule of thumb. So let's go back down to the other end of the machine and kind of see where we started off in the beginning and see how our part's doing down there. It should be, should be done. So I think total print time on this part was right around four hours. So uh, obviously we've moved around, but we tried to, uh, through the magic of TV, show you both ends of the, of, the, uh, of the part in one go. So you see we're fully finished on this side. See a little house on the side of the part over here if you come over to the side. So a little window in there helps with uh, keep, keep the weight down. And of course, a little support header in the middle. Come visit us at uh, airtech3d.com. So we're ready to hear uh, about your needs, both on materials and tooling. And uh, we, we await your call and our email. We look forward to talking to you. Thanks.